starring along with Oliver Reed in Great Scout and Cat House Thursday. That's the name of the picture, folks. Would you welcome Lee Marvin? Why you know, does it always happen to me you, when you follow an animal like that? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever spend any time in the Midwest traipsing through barnyards? You would know how to accomplish that. You Walk on your heels. You go nimbly afoot. That's right. hey, it's good to see you again. Nice to see you, John. It's been a long time. I know it has. I know, you don't do uh, television too often, I know that, in these kind of shows. It's nice to get you out of hibernation occasionally. Right, like the animals. Yeah. You and animals, you dig animals? Yeah, I, we just had a couple of those over at our house the other day. Down in Arizona, really? Yeah, that's true. That's right. You but they're about it. two weeks younger, and they were sensational. The old lady got shot, though, so that they were brought into this uh, friend of ours, uh, Sarah Gorby, who raises all those wild lost things. They're sensational, those cats. Do people shoot the mountain lions because of that thing about taking the sheep, or they just do it for yeah. what's so-called sport? Or well, it's an open season for you know uh, sportsmen, but mostly they're shot because of their problems with the uh, sheep and cattle. Yeah, but the guy that shot the old lady was good enough to. Uh, called the game warden, and then Sarah went out and got these. And there was another cub who was killed by the dogs, but the guy was uh, good enough to call somebody that knew how to handle them, and so they were saved. That's good, because most people take them in, uh, and you should never really take one. No, you shouldn't touch them at all. Just leave them. Or you know, for, notify the authorities. For a while in England, you know, Herod's department store, yeah. the great, one of the great department stores, you actually had a, I'm sure you know, a place where they sold exotic animals, you know, right. and people oh, thought it was very chic to go in and buy a boa constrictor or a toucan, or you could buy... Uh, leopard cubs or something, and most yeah. people just can't keep them in captivity. They don't. Well, they you don't know, make it. It's, it's amazing. In Africa, for instance, it's against the law to own a wild animal, which I think is a tremendous law. It is, and I you think you can have them in parks, but you can't have a house pet out of a what you consider a wild animal, which I think saves an awful lot of them. It makes sense because it, it, it never, really never works out. You, you originally grew up in New York or from New York, right? Yeah. And uh, of course, I suppose the only thing you saw as a kid was going out to the Central Park Zoo. As yeah, far as animals right. were concerned. The monkey concerned. cage and all the old guys with the overcoats crowding the nannies in to watch the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> and they wouldn't let them go. There's the old ladies stuck with these little kids and the monkeys are doing these funny things in the cage and all the old guys are going... <laughs> uh, they say New York is in trouble. Uh, <laughs> New York. Pervert Center. Right? <laughs> well, where else is New York? You're, you're in New York. I think when people were native New Yorkers, they kind of... They stand by the city, even though through it's all of its, uh, its problems it seems to be having. Well, it didn't look... I was just there, what, a couple of days ago, and I must say it looked pretty rich to me. I mean, every window, there were diamonds rolling in the gutters, guys sweeping them up. You know, there's a lot of dough back there. Yeah. It's, it's about what we guess. think of the town being broke. You, you every mentioned. other car is a limousine, right? Hmm. But you moved down now in the, uh, in the southwest? Yeah. Is that just to get away? You don't dig the living out here particularly? I know you work when you want to work. You do a picture when you want to. But you enjoy the, the privacy that much? A lot of people have, you know, have upped and uh, moved back to a different well, lifestyle and say, hey, this is what I really want to do. Well, I'm sort of, well, I'm out in the desert in Arizona. And there's a lot of, you know, miners and cowboys and you know, mostly pickup trucks and kind of just realistic as opposed to, you know, this kind of living. It does get a little strange out here, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Everybody's got one on you or something. You know, the cameras are going off at the wrong time. <laughs> you know. Well, you see, you read the newspapers. So what do you do? You just, you, uh, Oliver Reed's working with you, right, in a picture? Yeah. Was that the right name of it? Did I get the name the last, uh... Yeah, it's a complicated, was it, uh... The Scout and, The uh, Great Scout and Cat House Thursday, yeah. That's the name of it. It won't fit on a marquee, but, you know. Is there any way even to explain what that picture is about? No. <laughs> Even at this time of night, huh? That's right. And I read the script. <laughs> Obviously, a, a, a body, Wild West. Not so body. It's kind of a romp. You know, yeah. uh, 1908, Colorado. The, you know, the change of, you know, cars as opposed to horses and Indian fighters are defunct. Yeah. And Oliver Reed, who is a, one of my sidekicks in it, he was an Indian chosen by Roosevelt to go to Harvard. And he went back then to the Ivy League college and looked around and decided to revert to a drunken Indian. Good casting. <laughs> yes, Oliver's been on the show. He, uh, he puts a jar uh, away once in a while, doesn't he? Yes. Uh, <coughs> You've been known to have a, uh, something to calm your nerves. How'd you, is that what it is? is no, how'd, you, how'd you two guys hit it off? Uh, all right, yeah, all right. I would guess so. He was uh, just fine. <laughs> just fine when you could find him. Yeah. We got a, um, a small film clip. I don't know what part of the picture it is, but um, we can watch the monitors here in the studio. I don't know if it, you even know what the, uh, if it needs any setup. It probably sp speaks for itself. Hopefully. So, you know, let's roll it, and uh, we'll take a look at it. 
Small preview. Time waits for no man. <laughs> the old west, huh? It's a PG rated it's a... film, yes. You have to go with a registered pervert. No. <laughs> no, that time. That looks like fun. It was, yeah. It was kind of a challenging film. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you, so which may seem like a stupid question, but somebody once, I don't know who was on the show, maybe Bob Mitchum or something, said that he thought acting was a... Uh, he was kind of putting it down for a man. He said it's kind of a stupid thing for a grown man to do. And I, I'm attributing it to Mitchum, and I don't think it was him. But what he was saying, he didn't feel that that was a, the kind of a job for a man. I didn't exactly know what he meant. Uh, well, I think it's, uh, in a sense, this kind of acting, I guess. You'd, you're just having fun, and you're putting on the rags. And, uh, you know, I guess you're bringing entertainment to other people. But, you know, when you look at yourself, you think, what am I doing? A full-grown man up here, you know, wearing... A cartridge belt full of blanks, and I always miss my punches. And you know, you know, you're not going to get the girl because she's married to the guy standing over by the camera, and and you're pretending, you know, and you're saying, well, "52, here I am," saying, "Me." And there goes the limousine that way. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever said doesn't, it was right doesn't see. Right. I think right. that's okay. probably what he had in mind. It was kind of a silly occupation, but uh, do you enjoy? Do you enjoy what what you do? Yeah, because you enjoy the cast, I think, and you know the crew. And because the crew don't let you get away with anything because they can't get out in front of the camera. And the other actors, you're quite competitive a lot of times, and it ends up being a lot of fun just saying your own life. You ever worked in a picture with somebody, and I won't ask you to mention any names, somebody you really did not like, say a leading lady or somebody that, that has come up with people, you know, oh, and they've sure. got to do a picture, they've got to do a love scene, they've got to carry it off. Well, uh, I think that's probably better. When you really have a little hostility going? Yeah, because it comes across as love or, you know, something. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, that's a very close line. That's it's a right. close line. Otherwise, you have to kind of invent it. If you like the person, you, then you, you start considering it too much. Whereas if you don't really care about them, you just do it, and invariably it ends up better. Yeah, it's kind of like a Virginia Woolf situation. Yeah. It's a close thing there. Well, what would you like to do or if you finish making motion picture, you finally get tired of it? Stay in Arizona and just uh, go? You, you're a fisherman. Yeah. I like to do that. I'm, I'm, you know, but I'm an angler. I'm not a fisherman. You know, I'm a sports fisherman. Right. Yeah, I, I'd like to do that, but I'm sure that eventually the fish would get me, so... I want to ask you something about you. You've got the beautiful white hair now. You're not very old, and uh, you didn't... Uh, did they ever say to you, say, well, you want to do the hair, you know? Well, that's what happens yeah. in Hollywood. You know that a lot of people touch up their hair. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But you're going to play a role. It, it, or you it doesn't... Look at... uh, you know, I, I don't think it works with me. I think, you know, that... Uh, well, it doesn't change the nose, you know? There he is with dark hair, you know. I mean, he's trying to get back to childhood or something. Because I think it'll project that you're fooling. I saw some actor doing a commercial the other night. I'll mention no name speak. And he's been around for some time. And he was doing a, a commercial. And the hair was so black that it looked all out of... It did mm -hmm. not look real. Uh, the face didn't go with what was up on top. Well, remember in the early days when you were kicking around, too. Yeah. You'd see these guys coming in the morning. They had a... A thing of Shinola shoe polish. And they would literally do this to their hair. And the only thing you'd see is this shiny scalp coming through. And they'd glean from the top. <laughs> and, you know, and then through the show, they start to perspire, and these black stuff would start running down. What was, the, what was the picture that Vic Mature made where he, he played, and it was a put-on? He was playing the aging movie star. I don't know the name of it. And uh, he, it was really a camp. And he went in, the girl would knock at the door, and he'd quick run and he'd put the stuff in, and they would start to neck, and he would get heated, and the stuff started running down onto her face. It was hysterically funny. I didn't but the, see but that. the vanity. It's, yeah. uh, still a lot of that around. Yeah. And it is kind of silly. We'll take a short break. We're coming right back. Stay where you are. 